So now we're going to build a function and have it interact with a list. So for this function, I'm going to create something called shuffle numbers. Now, as that term uh, shuffle, uh, you can probably imagine I'm going to shuffle the lump numbers in my list. Now, okay, fair enough. We've got this going on. One of the things that we need to sort of uh, keep in mind when we're dealing with uh, lists inside of functions, since they are so complex, they could be thousands of numbers that we're dealing with. Python is not going to duplicate those thousands of numbers, but instead it's going to passed by reference or passed by reference. And what that means is that the, if we make any changes to numbers, it's going to affect the, or let me call this a list. Any change we make to a list is going to make the same change to the list. And what do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, for I in range len uh, a list, uh, a list at I uh, equals or <clears throat> times equals 10. That's it. I'm just going to make that my shuffle. Now we have a randomly generated set of numbers. I'm going to first do shuffle on my numbers. Now there's no print statement because again, we didn't say that there should be a print statement in our code, but just take a look at what shuffle said to do. Go in to every element inside of a list and multiply it by 10. Well, guess what happens? If I come in and print my numbers, all of my numbers magically have changed to that respective times 10. So it's something that we have to be mindful of. This can be beneficial if we're sometimes working and we, we want to manipulate this. Uh, for example, shuffle. I don't necessarily want to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to necessarily um, multiply it by 10, but if I were to shuffle my characters or my numbers around, that would be very important to know about. So uh, in this case, let's say, again, we want to shuffle our numbers. Well, if we're thinking about this, just to draw this out for a second, and let me get rid of that. There we are. So if we're thinking about just a list of numbers that I want to uh, work with, let's say I've got three, five, six, seven, 10. So I've got five randomly numbers. Uh, each one of those is going to again have some associated index to them. Well, when I'm traversing through this, so again, for I in, in range, Lin, and I'll just call this X to shorthand my writing. So I is going to be zero, one, two, three, four. Now at each iteration, I basically, if you think about it, want to make a random decision on those numbers. I need to find a, a pick a random spot. So I'm going to make a temp IDX temp index that is going to be some random number from zero to five, not including five. Okay, well, that's we're starting to get uh, an idea of where to go here. Let's say for our sake in this first iteration, uh, uh, let's see, uh, let me change colors there. Let's say uh, for example, we generated a four. Okay, so we want to swap the zero and the four. So what would I need to do? Well, I happen to now have that four value. Uh, so I need to again now extract out the value 
at that spot. So temp is now going to equal uh, x at my temp index. Again, if we're thinking about that, that is now 10. And so now uh, x at, or sorry, x at, uh, let's see, my i, or not yet, not yet, my apologies, uh, x at that randomly generated index is now got to be equal to my 3. So x at i. And then finally, the x at i would be equal to my temp. Okay, so I've drawn this out. What does it mean going uh, into each step? Again, if we magically assume that we've generated the random number of a four and we're at index zero at this time, I first grab whatever the value is at that four, so 10. Then I say x at, again, this is four, is now going to be x at zero. So I've just changed 10 to three. And then x at zero is gonna be equal to temp. Well, remember I made temp 10 uh, just a second ago. So we're just utilizing that 10 and that three is now a 10. Okay, okay. Uh, I've drawn it, so clearly it works, right? No, let's see that in action. So temp index. Again, we want to generate a random number. So random dot randint zero to how big my list is. And in this case, it may be uh, five characters. It may be, in this case, 10 characters because we generated 10 characters. How do we figure out the length of a list or the size of a list? Len, a list. Again, that's going to generate some random number. And so we're then going to get that element at that random number, idx, and then we're going to start swapping around. So again, uh, a list at that temp index is now going to equal whatever value was at, uh, or where, whatever the value was at our current location. And then our current location is now going to equal whatever that temporary value was. Okay, so once again, we've generated some random numbers. They are multiplied by 10 right now, uh, so there's nothing I can do about that. But I'll load that back in. I'm going to shuffle those numbers again. I want you to keep in mind that this is the current order of those numbers. Shuffle, I shuffled them. Uh, is 360 going to be my first element? No, it is no longer my first element. 110 is my first element, and where's 360? It magically went to the end. And as you can imagine, if I did it again, 360 this time went to the first. If it did it again, 360 is in the middle this time. So I can now shuffle through my lists. The big thing I do want to recommend, though, is sometimes you want this to happen. Sometimes you're not manipulating your list. Sometimes you're working with another list to work off of duplication. So some things to kind of think about when you're working uh, off of your lists and whatnot.